Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. Today's another great beginner topic. This is one of those videos that uh, I wish someone had made a video about when I was starting out because it's one of those things that is really critical information, but nobody ever seems to sit down and explain. And that's what kind of lubricants, oils, finishes, chemicals do you need in the machine shop? When you're first starting out, there's a bewildering array of oils and stuff that everybody seems to have. And if you're just starting out, it's like, well, what, what should I buy? What do I need to buy first? What's the minimum that I need to get started with my home machine shop? That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go. Let me say up front that I'm going to be talking about a lot of very specific products here, but I'm not sponsored nor have any affiliation with any of these products, so you'll be getting honest assessments. As my longtime viewers know, Bloody Hacks does not have sponsors. I rely on the kindness of my patrons. Oh God, this thing's always disgusting. Here's the primary contents of that box. I've kind of broken it down into major categories here. We've got lubricants, finishes, adhesives, and markup. And uh, let's talk about each of these in turn. We'll start with the lubricants. We'll start with the most important lubricant in the machine shop, and that's whey oil. This is uh, also called ISO 68 oil. You'll find it by one of these two names typically. And uh, this is something that machinists talk about all the time, but non-machinists have no idea what this stuff is. So if you're a hobbyist starting out setting up a machine shop, if you buy exactly one thing in the fluids department, make it this stuff. This is by far the most useful, and it's the one thing that you really can't live without and that there's really no substitute for. You might be asking yourself how I got this bottle in that little box, and well, that's a secret that I take to my grave. And this giant bottle isn't very useful, and this tends to be the smallest container that you can get it in, but uh, what you're also going to want to do is get yourself a nice couple of oilers to store this stuff in. And uh, you do want to get good quality oilers. I really like the goldenrod ones. Uh, cheap oilers are maddening because they drip and they leak and they're constantly messy. These guys stay clean and uh, are a joy to use. So I've got two different tips on these guys, and that's important. This is the flat tip, and this is most often used with ball oilers, which are common on newer machines especially. Here's a very typical ball oiler on a machine. This one lubricates the nut on my cross slide lead screw. And the way these oilers work is the flat tip there seals against the brass ring on the surface of the ball oiler, and then when you pump oil in there, it pushes the ball down. So uh, these guys can take a little bit of practice to use. You have to be very square to the face. And when you get it right, you'll feel the oil get pumped in there. You'll feel a little bit of resistance. And usually like one pump is all you need. If it sprays oil all over the place, then that means you didn't have the angle quite right and you didn't get a good seal against that ball. And uh, sometimes also there might be grit or something in the ball that's keeping the ball from moving. So you can uh, just poke it a little bit with a scribe and make sure that the ball is moving properly. But uh, if you've ever used a grease gun, it feels very similar. You can kind of feel it in the trigger on the pump when it, the oil is going in there. And then this is a pointed tip. Now you can buy these pointed tips, but I actually made this from a flat tipped one. You can just remove this tip chuck it up in the lathe and turn off the flat part. And this tip is good for general purpose use and also some styles of cup oiler or just straight oil holes, especially on some older machines, you may need a pointed tip to get the oil in there. Now that word whey oil is a very strange phrase and uh, to new machinists or non-machinists, uh, it's kind of a nonsensical thing. Well, what it's actually referring to, of course, is the ways on machines. All machine tools have slides and those slides ride on ways and so this is whey oil, oil for ways. And uh, what makes it special is that it's lubricating, but also sticky. So just put a little on my finger here. You see that, how it's kind of sticky? That's what makes it whey oil. And the reason that's important is that whey's have slides that are moving across them. So when we put this oil on here, if it wasn't sticky like that, when the slide moves across that surface, it's just going to scrape all the oil right off of there and uh, defeat the whole purpose. So whey oil is kind of magical stuff and uh, that's what uh, makes it perfect for this application. And whey oil is so useful that it's kind of the go-to, the when in doubt lubricant for machinists. It kind of gets used for everything. And in fact, a lot of machines specify whey oil in, for use in their change gears, in gearboxes, you know, in the gearboxes inside carriages or uh, quick change gearboxes uh, on lathes, things like that. You know, check your documentation, but oftentimes whey oil will be specified. 
This particular lathe specifies 75W80 gear oil for the quick change gearbox and the gearbox in the carriage. And this is a very typical high sulfur gear oil that you'd use in a differential or a manual transmission, something like that. So if in doubt for a gearbox, this stuff's probably a good choice as well. And of course, in addition to lubrication, whey oil is also providing corrosion protection because these are machined surfaces. There can't be any paint or anything on them, so they would eventually rust if we didn't have a layer of oil on there to keep the evil water away. Check the manual for your machine to see how often you should hit all these ball oilers and re-oil the ways, but honestly, like daily or every time you use the machine, you kind of can't do it too much. Oil is always good for machines, so if in doubt, smear some more oil on there. And similarly on the mill, you want to hit your dovetails periodically. Oftentimes there are ball oilers dedicated to lubricating these dovetails, but honestly, it's just as easy to, easy to go in here and just smear some oil on there periodically. So as I said, if you buy only one fluid, make it whey oil. If you buy two, and you should buy two, make the second one cutting oil. So this is Tap Magic. Uh, this is a great go-to for all sorts of materials. Uh, it works pretty well on pretty much everything. There are slightly better choices for brass and aluminum, but in general this stuff uh, is kind of a go-to. I've talked about the role of cutting fluid in previous videos, but uh, just to summarize that quickly, it provides lubrication for the cut, uh, it burns off and helps to control heat, and it also helps to clear chips away from the cut and prevent those chips from clogging up the cutter, damaging the surface, and so on. But the big jug of Tap Magic is not very convenient, so I keep a little container uh, near all my machine tools with these little acid brushes that are incredibly inexpensive. The third most useful lubricant you want to have around is some sort of high pressure grease. This is automotive wheel bearing grease. You can also get high pressure greases dedicated for machining, but uh, this stuff works fine. It's some sort of rule of the universe that the most noxious substances come in the worst containers. They always come in these cardboard tubes with ill-fitting lids and stuff smells really bad uh, because it's very high sulfur content. So uh, it's gonna make anything you put it near smell bad. So that's why part of why I keep it in a sealed box. And uh, yeah, this stuff is Satan's toothpaste and uh, I try to avoid it, but there are certain jobs for which it is just the thing. The kind of OG use of high pressure grease in machining is for lubricating your dead center. And uh, it's a great substance for that because it lubricates, but it can withstand the pressure of the center against the part. And uh, as the part expands under heat, the grease isn't going to get squished out so easily. This stuff is also often specified for change gears and lathes, and uh, I use this on my change gears. A lot of people also use whey oil on change gears, which is fine. The question of whether to use grease or oil in a given situation is always an interesting one. If in doubt, uh, the rule of thumb is basically that grease is good for things that are harder to access because it'll stay in place longer, but grease collects chips. So if the part is in an area that's going to be exposed to swarf, grit, chips, etc., then you probably don't want to use grease. Uh, but if you use oil, oil does have to be replenished. It doesn't stay in place. So for example, for my change gears, I prefer grease because the grease will stay in place on the gears and the gears are inside a cabinet where they're not exposed to anything. Conversely, for lubricating the mechanism in chucks, I prefer whey oil because that is exposed to swarf and uh, the chuck mechanism is fairly accessible, so it's not difficult to replace that oil occasionally as needed. If in doubt, if you're not sure which one to use, I tend to lean towards oil for a given mechanism. If something uh, is intended for grease, it has to be designed for grease. So there has to be looser tolerances on the bushing or whatever moving components are there because grease takes up more space. Okay, that's kind of the big three of machining lubricants. Now let's talk about some kind of more miscellaneous ones that are also useful to have around. First one, of course, is WD-40. And uh, this guy is a good cutting fluid for aluminum and brass. And of course it has all the other miscellaneous off-label uses that people use it for. Another interesting thing to have around is Anchor Lube. This guy is great for drilling and tapping in particular. I also like it for slot cutting on the mill. It's very good for controlling chips. Uh, the other advantage of this stuff is that it smokes less than traditional cutting oil. So if your shop has poor ventilation, if it's in a basement, or if it's winter and you got all the windows closed, Anchor Lube can be a good choice in those situations. Note that this stuff does smoke, uh, it just smokes a lot less. And uh, the downside to this stuff is the smoke smells a lot worse. So, you know, pick your poison, I guess. Well, literally, because... Cutting oil smoke is poisonous. Don't breathe it in. Next up we have dry graphite lubricant, and this stuff is great for any environment that has a lot of grit, so grinders especially, uh, lubricating sliding mechanisms on grinders, things like that. 
Uh, you know, I talked about how grease collects chips. Well, both grease and oil collect grit. So anything that is near grinding dust, dry lubricant is a great option. I also keep this stuff around, good old fashioned three in one oil. This is a nice light machine oil. It's great for lubricating model steam engines, things like that. I also use it as a lubricant for uh, light duty grinding. So for sharpening stones or uh, using emery cloth on the lathe, things like that. And maybe you were wondering what this old soda can was doing in my establishing shot. Well, this uh, is a stand-in for used motor oil, which uh, I also keep around. Uh, that's great for uh, quenching parts after heat treating and various other miscellaneous uses. And for things that need grease, but you don't want to use this nasty wheel bearing grease, it's great to have some sort of Teflon or lithium based grease around. This stuff doesn't smell and uh, it's quite tidy, so it's great for drawer slides or other light duty grease applications. On now to machine shop adhesives. And once again, if you buy one and only one product, make it Loctite 603. And there are a lot of variations for this for slightly different applications. This one is technically specced for press fits, but uh, it actually works just fine for slip fits as well. And uh, it's a cyanoacrylate based adhesive. You can tell by the smell. And uh, it's really general purpose. You can glue pretty much any metal to any metal. So any kind of retaining pin or you know sm small mechanisms that you want to uh, be held together forever, this stuff is really fantastic. It's incredibly strong, honestly. Like it's up there with soldering uh, for strength. There are a few things that uh, I've found that it won't glue together and I've never ever had it fail. And if you do need to separate parts that are put together with this stuff, a little bit of heat and they pop right apart, no problem. And this stuff's especially great for us amateurs because if you're going for a press fit on a part and you blow the dimension, well, this can rescue that assembly. And of course, there's the old standby Loctite 242, sometimes called the blue stuff, that uh, is for locking threaded fasteners in place in high vibration environments. So the, you know, fastening bolts on grinders or, you know, parts on your car, that sort of thing. The other two Loctites I have in my collection are 545 and 569. These are both hydraulic and pneumatic sealants. I'm actually not sure exactly what the difference is between them. I have both because I bought one, forgot I had it, and then bought the other one. In any case, uh, I use it for uh, steam fittings on model steam engines for sealing those. And this stuff is actually really good for that. It uh, expands quite a bit and uh, it can rescue quite poorly made or poorly fitting uh, fittings and keep them from leaking. And of course, you probably want to have your standard adhesives around like epoxy and super glue. And these are primarily used for playing pranks with your coworkers office chairs. Next up is finishes and this is a special category for the machine shop because unlike your typical DIYer we don't just paint everything. We want more kind of high precision finishes. In the machine shop we want to protect things from corrosion but in a way that isn't going to uh, add thickness to the surface or uh, otherwise interfere, chip off, create a mess. So that's why we don't paint things. So the most popular high precision finish is black oxide and that's a high temperature process that we can't do at home. But there's a common alternative called cold bluing. And uh, so we have a couple of products here that I like for that. The first one is Jax. And uh, this stuff is fairly inexpensive. Uh, the trick with this stuff is that it, it only really works if you can fully immerse the part in it. So that's why it comes in the big jug. But my favorite cold bluing product is without a doubt Brownells Oxbow Blue. This stuff I've demonstrated many, many times on my channel. You just wipe it onto a clean surface and magically everything turns black. And then you can buff it out, reapply a couple times, and you'll get kind of a gun blue look if you like that. Uh, this stuff is spendy and uh, it comes in these small bottles that have a tendency to get used up pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, if you really want a great finish that's easy to achieve, I think this is a great choice. And if I was only going to buy one or the other of these, I would definitely buy this one. I started with this stuff because I'd seen it recommended elsewhere and it was okay. And then I tried this stuff and now I'm a convert. I've buried the lead a little bit here and skipped over the most fundamental and basic finishing process for precision parts. And that's oil. Pretty much anything that you don't want to rust, you can just simply oil it and it will never corrode. Now, of course, the downside is oiling makes the part, you know, a little bit messy to handle. So that's where cold bluing products can help. Although with cold bluing, you generally do want to oil it again after the fact to uh, really boost the corrosion protection, but cold bluing does help a little bit by itself. Now, if none of those are good options, if you want to keep the parts silver, but you don't want to oil it, an option that I like is Shield T9, and this is a thin spray-on wax product. It's not quite as durable as cold bluing or oil, so it's 
better for more occasional use parts, but uh, this stuff is very, very effective for corrosion protection. So it's great for things like the column on your drill press or you know tools that aren't going to get a ton of use, things like that. So uh, it lets you keep that silver finish and uh, it doesn't really need reapplying ever and uh, will keep things from corroding. And lastly, I'll call out metal polishes. Of course, there's lots of use for these in the machine shop as well for those times when you need uh, a really, really perfect finish. You might go all the way down to, you know, something like 3000 grit emery paper. And if you really want to get to that mirror, then you got to get into the polishes. And the final category is marking fluids. So the most common, of course, is die cam. And I did a whole video all about layout where I talked lots about this stuff and how to use it. And it's low rent cousin the Sharpie markers. But a closely related substance that you want to have around is Prussian blue. And this stuff is basically the same as die cam, except that it doesn't dry. And so what you use this stuff for is checking the fits on things. For example, if you've got a Morse taper that uh, isn't seating properly or it's popping out, you know, it might mean that there's a rough spot in there somewhere. And uh, so what you can do is cover one surface with this stuff mate the two surfaces together, pull them apart again, and then the blue will transfer and show you where there's rough spots, low spots, etc. So this stuff is great for fit up and machine rebuilding and things like that. It's certainly less commonly used than die cam, but when you need this stuff, nothing else will work. And for extra credit, a listener recently showed me this stuff. Die cam comes in bingo style dauber bottles. So this is a really convenient way to apply it. Uh, it's a little more expensive in this form and kind of hard to find. I had to dig around a little bit to find it. But uh, this is a, a really convenient and uh, tidy alternative to the brush in a bottle. And finally, a few other miscellaneous products that you might want to keep around. A big one, of course, is acetone. In addition to being the, the solvent for die cam, it's also a great general purpose degreaser and cleaner. And when this stuff isn't enough, you can bring out the big guns brake cleaner, which is the preferred solvent of metallic ore, the god of machining. I've never found a substance that this stuff will not attack. Soapy water you keep around for finding leaks in your acetylene hoses or your airlines, things like that. This is especially helpful for not exploding when you're using your acetylene torch. Now, if you get into silver soldering or brazing, there's whole other categories of substances that come into play. But for silver soldering, uh, you've got your flux here and your uh, pickling acid, which is a uh, a good kind of cleaning solvent for residues left over from brazing and silver soldering types of operations. This stuff is super nasty. It also eats pretty much everything. As you can see, just the general vicinity of the vapors rusted the lid here, but uh, keep this stuff in a glass jar because uh, it pretty much attacks everything. And then a good penetrating oil. I like Croil for loosening rusted fasteners, things like that. This stuff is super effective, but holy cow, does it smell nasty. So uh, yeah, every time I use this stuff, the shop smells bad for a day. I think it was uh, Doug over at SV Seeker who said that uh, th there's a rule of the universe that the worse something smells, the better it works. And uh, that certainly seems to be the case with penetrating oils and solvents. That wraps up my go-to fluids, chemicals, finishes, etc. I'm sure that I've left out some that are your favorites, so uh, go ahead and list them down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful, and we'll see you next time.